Camping is something I've always wanted to do. I, I love the idea of being on your own, disconnected from society, and to me it seems like the ultimate sense of freedom. But there's a problem. I hate tents. This is my e-bike, and we will be building a camper for this thing to pull around. And we're gonna start with this. The plan to make this camper is pretty simple. We're using a kid's bike for the wheels, and we're going to make the base out of wood. Now that we've got everything cut, all we gotta do is screw it together. The wooden base was looking good and coming along nicely. Problem is, we have no idea if this is even going to work. Oh my god, it worked! Or so we thought. So we drove this a little farther than we should have, and we already got a flat. We might need heavier duty wheels. It's a good thing we test drove this because it already exposed the weakest link, the wheels. So we replaced these wimpy bike wheels with ones that could go a much farther distance. This camper has to last. When it's done, I'll be pulling it to a campsite about 50 miles away from our house. On a bike, that's an eight hour ride. We reserved a camping spot on the mountain for this Friday night, which meant we had two more days to complete the camper. And because we wanted this thing to be super comfortable and luxurious, we decided to install an AC unit. <laughs> oh yeah, and a TV. This, this has got to be the coolest thing we've ever built. It's at least at least number three. <laughs> Not only did this camper have a working AC unit and TV, but it was ready to be towed anywhere by a bike. So once we wrapped up the finishing touches, I was headed off on my journey. But as you can imagine, it didn't start out promising. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Okay, stop it. As it turns out, this camper is so heavy that it was pushing me down the hill and I couldn't control it. Yeah, it's a little heavy. When I eventually made it downhill, I realized how hard it was to go up hills. Even with the e-bike, it's freaking hard. Okay, we gotta book it, book it, book it. It didn't take me long to realize that we made a catastrophic mistake. This entire camper was made out of big, heavy sheets of wood. That combined with small wheels, TV, and AC, it was actually dangerous to pull around. Not to mention, I was only two miles into this 50 mile trip. But things really took a turn for the worse when I ran off the road, tried to get out of a ditch, and the camper started to roll backwards. Oh my god! Right now, behind the camper, is a creek 10 feet deep. Oh my god. And after about a minute of holding on, I couldn't any longer. No, 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 no! No! The camper we tirelessly worked on, and made absolutely perfect, was now a huge pile of trash. Dude, dude, just, just stop. Not only was the camper and everything in it completely destroyed, but I'd only been able to go about three miles. We put it on a trailer and drove it back home. You know, we felt miserably, and it really doesn't sit well with me. So we're gonna finish this camper on time and I will drag it to the campsite if that's what it takes. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna make a new one. And to make sure this new camper actually survives a 50 mile drive, we have one rule. Make this thing as light as possible. If we take out the AC and TV, the camper's automatically 60 pounds lighter. So they were the first to go. Next, after watching some YouTube videos, we learned that you can make the walls and ceiling out of foam. So we got lots of it. Dude, this is so much lighter than wood. I called the park to set up a new date for the camping trip, so it was time to go all in on our new camper. We started by making the whole thing way smaller. The wheels we used this time were much bigger, which meant this thing can go fast and be very stable. Then we put the foam walls up and framed it in with the roof. Look how strong this is. It's crazy. It's just foam. With these foam walls and roof, the new camper only weighed about as much as two gallons of milk. After adding the windows and doors, the next couple of days consisted of painting it over and over again, making sure we had the perfect waterproof layer. And after that, the only thing left to do was the inside. Right now, Colby's on his way to the campsite. I'm literally finishing this up and leaving. I got seven hours till the park closes, so there's no time to waste. So while I was heading out, Colby was going to find our campsite and get started. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I think I might've just got us a campsite. Meanwhile, I was having the best time of my life towing this camper. 25 miles per hour, no problem. But unfortunately, the good times didn't last long. Okay, so already, it seems if I have a little problem. The tire scraped the side of this. The wheel seems a little loose. At this point, I only had six hours left to get to the campsite because at eight o'clock, they locked the gates and after that, there's really no way to get in. There's nothing I can do now. I just gotta hope it's not a problem later. I'm really sick of these wheel problems. Even with the issues I was facing, I managed to knock out 11 miles. As long as the wheel doesn't get any worse, I should be able to make it. But either way, I have to keep going. All right, so I just made it to the campsite. Um, my only 
thing that I need to do is set up the tent and, and wait on Che. Right now I'm going down a hill, so I'm going 30 miles per hour. I can feel the wind pulling me out to the side. How do I do this? There's literally no way the old camper ever would have survived this. That goes in here. There's no way I would have survived this. And done. I'm gonna stop at this lot. I really need a break for a second. This thing's getting really hard to pull. I'm not sure if it's my bike dying or just me dying, but it's getting pretty difficult. I just need, I just need a second. I'm gonna grab this parking spot up here. At this point, I've been pulling the camper for about six hours, which is why I fell asleep for about 10 minutes, which wasn't a big deal until I walked outside and made a shocking discovery. Oh. I think I know why it was getting so hard to pull. This wheel is flat. So there's a Walmart like five miles from here. I think I'm gonna try and go to there. I'm gonna have to pull it on the flat tire though. The entrance to the park closed in less than two hours and I was still 10 miles away. Now I have to take a five mile detour to a Walmart to try and fix my tire. Wasting any more time was not an option. Yeah, I can feel it pulling me to one side because of that wheel. I'm trying not to go too fast. But at the same time, I really wanna get there. The sidewalk's so narrow, I gotta be careful this thing doesn't run me off the road into oncoming traffic, which is like two feet away from me. After that, conditions only started to get worse. Not only was the sidewalk super bumpy, but I was constantly threading the needle. I mean, at one point, the camper almost flipped over and hit a brick wall. And as if having a flat tire wasn't bad enough, the other wheel from earlier started to get even looser, and I began to worry it was going to fall off. Oh, this camper is taking a beating. I don't know how much longer these wheels are gonna last. But eventually, I made it to Walmart, and by this point, you could hear the back wheel scraping against the side of the camper. I love downhill. When I got to Walmart, I ran inside and was able to buy a bike pump to temporarily fix my tire. All right, let's hope this works. I was able to pump up the wheel and I figured I had a good amount of time before it went flat again. As for the other one, there was nothing I could do so I had to hope it didn't fall off. I got seven more miles on this road, just straight that way, then a couple turns and we're pretty much there. Now that the wheel's pumped up, I was able to go a lot faster and I felt like I had a fighting chance of getting there. But when I was literally two miles away, Colby called me. Hello? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I'm like two miles out. What's up? It closed 15 minutes ago. It's 8.15. I don't know what you want to do, but I guess I'll see you tomorrow. I, I don't know what else to say. Kobe was right. The park closed 15 minutes ago, and I just let time get ahead of me. I began to think that 50 miles with the camper was way too ambitious, and I never should have tried in the first place. These types of moments happen a lot in my life. I think I can do something and it just doesn't work out at all. So I've learned to set myself up with a rule. Just keep going. I'm not stopping until I see the entrance. I don't care if they're closed, I'm going to make it. The last two miles were a breeze and when I got there to the locked gate, I got really excited because I had an idea. Because we made this camper so light, I was actually able to leverage this thing over the gate by myself. Yeah. Well, Tay's not gonna make it tonight. Campsite's closed now, so. I'm gonna be here alone. I'm on my way, buddy. Just a little longer. And finally, after pulling this camper for eight hours, I arrived. Come on! Hey, dude! I made it! I'm sure most of you watching this video have gone through some hard times in your life. But trust me, on the other side of pain is growth. I'll see you next video.